Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Inside Egypt where we bring you the latest in politics, economics and cultural events on the scene that took place throughout the week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in a short break. Please stay tuned. President Al Fatah Sisi witnessed on Thursday through a video conference inaugurating the renovation works of the Armed Forces Medical Complex in Kubri al Ubba district. After arriving to the site, the President listened to a briefing on the renovation of the complex's fourth stage, which includes 30 projects. An annex to the specialized heart hospital was also established to raise its capacity to 300 beds instead of 120, in addition to an administration building to serve the visitors. The medical complex occupies 40% of a 32.5 Fadden land lot and includes includes 1,750 beds, 300 of which are in the intensive care unit, 120 beds in the kidney dilation unit, and 35 beds in the operation rooms. The complex also embraces clinics, hospitals and specialized centers, and units such as the pressure, pressured oxygen treatment and the laser units. President Al Fatah al Sisi held a phone call on Wednesday with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin, where President al Sisi expressed his condolences over the killing of the Russian ambassador in, in Turkey. President al Sisi stressed that Egypt is supporting Russia in its fight against terrorism. For his part, the Russian president thanked President al Sisi for his support, stressing that Egypt and Russia should cooperate in combating terrorism. The Russian president said during the phone call that this country will resume flights between Moscow and Cairo as soon as possible. Egypt's President al Fatah al-Sisi met on Wednesday with Iraq's Foreign Minister Ibrahim Jafari in Cairo where they discussed the latest developments in Iraq. Al-Jafari informed al-Sisi of the latest efforts by Iraqi forces in fighting terrorism and recapturing the city of Mosul from militant forces. The Iraqi Foreign Minister also expressed his appreciation for Egypt's efforts in the region. Al-Sisi assured the Iraqi official that Egypt is resolute in its support of the Iraqi state, its sovereignty over all Iraqi territories, and its efforts to restore security and stability in the country. President Al-Sisi also stressed Egypt's rejection of any external interference in Iraqi affairs and attempts to divide the Iraqi people. The Egyptian leader also praised the efforts of the Iraqi government in fighting terrorism as well as successful recapturing of Mosul. Also on Wednesday, President Fatah al-Sisi met with Malta's Foreign Minister George Fila, who was visiting Egypt. The meeting was attended by Foreign Minister Samih Shukri and Malta's ambassador to Egypt. During the meeting, the President said that Egypt is depending on Malta to explain to the European countries the real image of the latest development in Egypt and in the region. Presidential spokesman Ali Yusuf have said that Malta's top diplomat delivered his presence greetings to President Fatah al-Sisi. Malta's foreign minister said that his country follows up the economic reforms in Egypt, stressing that it supports Egypt's efforts to achieve comprehensive development. President Sisi hailed the two countries' bilateral relations and stressed that he's keen to boost them on all fields. President Sisi also congratulated Malta on its rotating presidency of the EU, saying that consultations between the two countries should continue, especially on the light of current challenges facing the whole region. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this report was President Al Fatah al Sisi's uh, stressing on Wednesday that Egypt is ready to provide all supports, uh, sorts of support to Iraq. This came during President Al Fatah al Sisi's meeting with Iraqi Foreign Minister Ibrahim al Jafari, and we gave you more details in the uh, in the report. And we move on to Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri, who received on Wednesday his Omani counterpart Yusuf bin Alwi. Uh, Foreign Minister Spokesman Ahmed Abu Zaid said that the visiting Omani officials stressed his country's support to Egypt and President Al Fatah al Sisi in light of the friendly relations between the two brotherly countries. The Foreign Minister also met this week with Foreign Minister of the Visa Grade Group of the four Central European states. More about this meeting in the following report.
Minister Samah Shukri received the four ministers of the Visegrad Group of the four Central European states, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Slovakia. The meeting was held within the framework of a mechanism of consultation grouping the four European countries and Egypt regarding issues of common interest. Foreign Ministry spokesman Ahmed Abouzid said that Shukri underlined at the meeting Egypt's keenness on exchanging views and coordinating stances between the two sides. He added that the Egyptian top diplomat expounded the recent developments at the internal level, especially the economic reform measures adopted by the government. The meeting took up a detailed decision on regional issues where Shukri asserted Egypt's stance towards Syria and the necessity of extending relief assistance to civilians who are victimized by the armed conflict there. Shukri also explained the Egyptian stance on Libya, asserting support for the Sukhairat Agreement. He also reviewed the Egyptian vision regarding the conditions in Iraq and Yemen. According to the spokesman, he further touched on means of coordinating efforts concerning illegal migration along the means of fighting terrorism. The four foreign ministers underlined their keenness on the stability of Egypt as a cornerstone of regional stability. Meanwhile, Shukri received the Spanish foreign minister who was visiting Egypt to take part in an Arab-European foreign ministerial meeting. Foreign Ministry spokesman Ahmed Abouzid said that Shukri underlined Egypt's keenness on maintaining distinguished relations with Spain. Shukri also said that Egypt is looking forward to Spanish support inside the European Union, given the current challenges facing Egypt, a top of which come economic difficulties and fighting terrorism. The Spanish minister appreciated the Egyptian stances regarding several regional issues, a top of which come the files of Syria, Libya, Iraq and Yemen. Minister of Immigration and Egyptian Expatriate Affairs, Nabila Makram Abed, has received His Excellency Secretary General of the Australian Foreign Ministry, Michelle Lynn Hart, on, her, on an official visit to Cairo. The meeting, uh, main aim was to strengthen the bilateral relations between Austria and Egypt and finding means uh, of areas of mutual benefits of cooperation between the two countries, for example, fighting illegal immigration. And uh, ITV's Dina Hwedek was there and conducted the following interview with His Excellency, Secretary General of the Australian Foreign Ministry, uh, Michelle Linhart. More details with Dina Hwedek. To be today in Cairo and to meet the Minister of Immigration. Uh, migration is a very important issue in Europe, in Austria, uh, and we see Egypt as a strong partner in fighting illegal migration. What we want is uh, that uh, people who are in need of uh, protection uh, get the necessi necessary support, but that we fight together the model of uh, illegal migra migration and the model of these traffickers. Uh, uh, I think uh, we can have a very strong cooperation in that in future. Uh, it is also the question of integration of migrants, uh, where Egypt has great experience and where we as Austrians, as Europeans, can learn a lot. And uh, the exchange of this experience is important to us and uh, we agreed today that we will increase and uh, enforce our cooperation in that issue. I think the, the important is that uh, we, we cut uh, the business model of uh, the traffickers. Uh, it's not the traffickers who should select where the people have the right uh, to go to, but uh, we have to see uh, which people are in need of the protection. Minister of International Cooperation Dr. Sahar Nasr met on Wednesday with Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade Peter Cizgyarto. The meeting tackled means of activating bilateral ties in economic, scientific and technical fields. Earlier, Nasr and the EU's High Representative for Political and Foreign Affairs who is also the deputy head of the European Commission, on Tuesday signed a deal worth 60 million euros. Nasser said the deal aims at boosting small and medium-sized projects and includes enhancing education programs and combating child labor. The details in the following report. 
have not faced relations between Egypt and the European Union, saying that the EU plays a positive role as a key development partner of Egypt. Addressing a joint press conference with High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Federica Mogherini, currently visiting Egypt, the minister referred to the EU's serious wish to boost relations with Egypt at all levels, particularly economic ones. The minister said that the signing of two 120 million euros agreements with the EU that all Egypt development partners are keen on supporting it and promoting the government's program, adding that it is necessary that social protection goes alongside economic reform. She expressed satisfaction over signing the two grants agreements, particularly as the two are aiming at upgrading youth skills for a better future. She voiced confidence that the Egyptian government would work on implementing the two agreements efficiently within the framework of improving the living standards of citizens. The two sides probed also increasing cooperation based on a memorandum of understanding on the new unified support between the two sides, whose funding reached between 311 and 380 million euros. A number of programs and projects that serve Egypt's priorities, including social protection, good governance and transparency, improving work, environment and the living standards of citizens and protecting the environment will be implemented. And now, dear viewers, it's time to look at the Touristic Magazine, which brings us interesting news related to tourists and attractive destinations in Egypt. Abir Matwelli has more in the following report. Prime Minister Sharif Ismail issued a ministerial decree to establish two independent general authorities for the Grand Egyptian Museum, the GEM, and the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization, the NMEC, under the supervision of the Antiquities Ministry. Minister of Antiquities Khaled al anani said the decree states that every authority would have its own board of trustees composed of a group of Egyptian and prominent international public figures with experience in the field. Every board would draft the museum's general policies, setting up a work program, and managing the museum's budget through studying the grants, donations, and gifts provided from the international, regional, and local parties within the articles of law and regulations that organize them. Minister of Antiquities Khaled al anani met with representatives of the UNESCO office in Egypt and a special international agency to discuss preliminary suggestions on making use of the visitor center of the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization in Fustat as well as its cultural and commercial sections. Mahrou Saeed, Supervisor General of the NMEC, said that the UNESCO's Egypt office asked a special international agency to carry out a feasibility study on getting the best use out of the NMEC visitor center, as well as finding additional finance to restart suspended work on the museum. The cultural section of NMEC houses a 332-seat cinema, 
a 486-seat theater, a lecture and conference halls equipped with state-of-the-art projectors, media sound and lighting systems. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the Association of Opera Egypt for Education and Development has a program in cooperation with the European Union that offers education opportunities for everyone while promoting the individual's freedom, creativity and human dignity. Abir Gindi was at the Association's Festival for Creativity and Art and filed in the following reports. The European Union is cooperating with the Association of Upper Egypt for Education and Development to fund an arts program for youth. The association is a non-governmental organization that aims at enlightening the minds of children and youth as well as enhancing their skills. The EU selected Upper Egypt for their funded program going on for the last two years so as to support the access and participation of 13 disadvantaged communities as a means of culture and arts expression. I think it's a very peaceful mean of expressing what you have on your mind, of expressing who you are, what you believe in. And it's great to have this expression put in one form or another, whether it's dance, whether it's art, as we see here on, on written art, um, so that people can actually see who you are and what you think, and then you can open up a dialogue on this particular point. The association goes back to 75 years of civil work and education. The main aim of the, its work is to maintain sustainability in its activities for youth. The activities include education utilized as a means of expanding people's choices and build a comprehensive vision. How to encourage, uh, encourage them uh, to, um, to uh, ex ex exit uh, uh, their talents, uh, all talents, how uh, they can solve uh, their problems in their communities through artists, uh, through drawing, through uh, theatre, through pantomime, uh, they thinking all the time, uh, what we have from problem, how we can solve this problem. Uh, how we can do this together, how we can live together. This is the main point in our culture program and association. Within the framework of continuous improvement of a learning environment for youth, they are performing activities that enhance their skills and encourage others as well as children to enhance their artistic talents. كان هدفنا كله نحن من إزاي نقدر نغير في المجتمع بتاعنا. Our aim is to change our community through artistic activities in schools and orphanages. The idea is to encourage arts through linking between games and art. In the end, the association is to encourage innovation and creativity to keep up quality through varying methods of expression and encouragement of critical thinking.
The Creativity and Arts Festival asserts the fact that youth are combating terrorism through their expression of various arts. This is Abira Gindi, Nile TV International, Cairo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was a quick wrap-up of the latest political, economic and cultural events that took place here in Cairo. And this was today's episode of Inside Egypt. I'm Ronald Qassar sitting in for Shalid Aydil. Hope you enjoyed being with us as much as we have. And until we meet again in another episode of Inside Egypt in another day and another team, it's goodbye.